Praise God, praise God. Welcome to our Sunday service. What can we do without the Holy Spirit of God? That's why the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is always freedom, there is fullness, there is power, there is hope, there is life, where there is no meaning, meaning returns. Hallelujah. Amen. So um, those of you in this session, uh, I'd like to encourage you, if it's possible, you know, for you to on your camera so that we can see you. Don't worry, I will not ask you any questions. That happens only on Wednesdays, yeah? So today is the Sunday service. It's the preaching of his word and the Holy Spirit does, he demonstrates his spoken word with results, amen. Now, if you turn your Bible to Matthew chapter nine, Matthew chapter nine. Now, before I give you the title for today's message, I'm going to read to you our theme verse, the couple of verses which will be our theme verses for today. Thereafter, I'll tell you what the topic is. If you have turned to Matthew chapter nine, we are going to read the last couple of verses. That is from verse number 35, all the way up to 38. So we are going to read these four verses, Matthew chapter nine, verses 35 to 38. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Hallelujah. I'm going to read verse number 36 again. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Now, you need to understand, very especially starting from Matthew chapter 8, a series of events to do with healing has taken place. For example, when you look at Matthew chapter eight, Jesus heals a, a man who was uh, struck by a, a disease. And then he healed the centurion's servant. Then he went into Peter's house. He healed Peter's mother-in-law. And with that, just before you come to Matthew chapter nine, verse number 35, Jesus again heals another person. And with all these healings, the Bible says, thereafter as Jesus kept encountering more people one at a time, you know, one after the other, Jesus was moved with compassion because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were like sheep without a shepherd. For the title for today's message is, what the Holy Spirit has placed in my heart to share with all of you is, sheep without a shepherd. Sheep without a shepherd. You need to understand, sheep without a shepherd is a very dangerous thing. They are prone to attack. They can easily get misled. They can wander off of their own. The same way, the body of Christ today that represents the sheep must always have a shepherd who watches over them. Now, this is a good message for anyone who doesn't believe in the church. If you are a person who doesn't believe in, you know, uh, being a part of a church, you know, nowadays, you know, ministries, there are ministries that conduct sessions online. Be a part of at least one of them because you have to be a part of a church. That you need to come under a covering. This is what the Bible says. Psalm chapter 23, verse number six says, surely goodness and mercy will follow you every single day of life, every day of your life, if you do what? If you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So you need to have a shepherd that you are connected to. So today's message is about the sheep not 
having a shepherd. Now, who is a shepherd and what is their role? The shepherd that Jesus was describing here. And again, when you read John chapter 10, Jesus talks about the good shepherd. A shepherd is a pastor. A shepherd is a pastor. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 11, you find the fivefold ministry. You get the apostles, they got the teachers, the pastors, the evangelists, and the prophets. And the role, the main role of a pastor is to God. It's to God. Some of you who have been journeying with us for a, uh, quite, quite some time now, you will know this because you'll have heard uh, this from me uh, for some time. I have explained to you the roles of the fivefold ministry. Number one, the apostles, the apostles are called to govern. Teachers are called to ground. Pastors are called to guard. Evangelists, they gather. Prophets, they guide. So that is what every category is called to do. And why you need to be, why it's important for you to be connected to a servant of God who is a pastor is because God has given them that covering where he gives you that covering through a man of God or a woman of God, where God gives you spiritual protection. A pastor's role is to guard the flock. Now, what should a shepherd do? We're going to look at a couple of things that a pastor should do. Number one, a pastor is called to help you in your spiritual growth. You need to be connected to a good ministry where you are growing. You have to grow spiritually. You can't be connected to a ministry. You can't be connected to a pastor and not grow. If you are not growing spiritually, there is something missing. If your spiritual substance is not receiving value, if you are the same person who used to be about two years ago, if you are the same person now, if you have not received revelation, fresh revelation from the word of God, my precious people of God, this is, you know, this is why I always say being a pastor is not a joke. And we have so many people who like to get into ministry, those who are not even called to become a pastor, you know, those who are not even called into the pastoral ministry, you get a handful of them nowadays. They look at our lives and they think it's easy to be a pastor. No. All what you see sometimes is us coming and preaching in sessions like this, but you don't know the countless number of hours where we pay the price in prayer, in worship. Don't think that I come and share uh, the Sunday message you know, for half an hour. Don't think that I just wake up on a Sunday morning, you know, wash my face, brush my teeth, come and look at all of you, you know, pretty faces and you know, just give a message and go. No, for at least three to four hours I prepare before I come and deliver a message for half an hour. So you need to have spiritual growth. That's why I always encourage you spend time in the presence of God. Sometimes some of you would have got fed up of hearing this from me. But sorry to say, even in time to come, you will continue to hear this from me. You need to spend more time in the presence of God unless otherwise you are not going to experience any spiritual growth. You must be connected to a ministry. You must be connected to a shepherd, a pastor who drives you, who encourages you, who is behind you all the time. I thank God for those of you who, who, uh, who, who message me with the, 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 the teachings, the revelation the Holy Spirit gives you places in your heart. So I know that some of you are on track and God bless you if you are spending time with the Holy Spirit of God. But my precious people of God, you need to you need to spend time with the presence of God because the person that you are connected to must be helping you in your spiritual growth. Number two, here is a very important one. A shepherd, while helping you in your spiritual growth, must help you to be prepared to face biblical prophecy. This is a component that is really missing out in Christianity today. As a pastor, it is my responsibility to prepare you to face and to be prepared for biblical prophecy. Now, how many of you remember uh, what we looked at last Sunday? If you, if you can't even remember the title, now I'm going to start praying for you. Uh, just joking. We looked at 
being prepared for the rapture, are you rapture ready? So my responsibility is to prepare all of you, not to start preparing when the rapture is about to happen, but to be prepared beforehand to face the rapture, to get caught up into mid-air and meet, your, meet Jesus in mid-air. That is my responsibility because biblical prophecy will come to pass. I need to, as a servant of God, prepare you for eternity. There are people who are preparing the body of Christ today for prosperity. That's all what they're uh, teaching the body of Christ. It's all prosperity. Prosperity has exceeded eternity. I was reading this morning, I was meditating on the book of Proverbs and I, I think it's in Proverbs chapter 11, the Bible says, you know, riches will not do you any good when it comes to times of advert, adversity. Riches will not do you any good when it's time for you to leave, when it's time for you to go, when it's time for you to be raptured, riches will not do you any good at all because you have to leave everything behind. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 26, Jesus says, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Number three, help you to endure in sound doctrine. My precious people of God, the, any servant that you are connected to must help you to endure in sound doctrine. There is a part that I play as a pastor at the same time. There is a responsibility that you have in your end where my responsibility is to teach you to endure in sound doctrine. You must be first of all grounded in sound doctrine and thereafter you must be trained to endure in sound doctrine. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse number 3 and 4 says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Because the time has, this time has already come where Christians are not enduring sound doctrine. Sound doctrine can never be preached where, where, the, where Christians are taught about the wider gate. You have to walk through the narrow gate. It's the narrow gate that takes a child of God into life. The broader way, it takes you only towards destruction. Number four, a shepherd must cover you with prayer. That's what we all do for countless hours. We are on our knees praying for your protection, praying that the Holy Spirit of God will lead you. And then number five, dedicate their life for the sheep. No, so if you know that you are called into pastoral care, you need to understand that you need to dedicate your life for the betterment of the sheep. This is what you are called to do. Because being in ministry, very especially being in pastoral care, is extremely demanding. You are not doing a nine-to-five job. You are doing a job they are doing. You are working over time. And the Lord is your rewarder. Then, dangers of not having a shepherd in your life. I want all of us to pay attention to dangers of not having a shepherd in your life. Number one, you become vulnerable to the enemy. Jesus said in John chapter 10, we know that from the start of this uh, verse, it's about Jesus is explaining about him being the good shepherd. He says in verse number 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. This is why it's important for you to be connected to someone when you think you are lost, when you don't have the right spiritual guidance, where you can connect to a person and to a shepherd and say, Pastor, will you pray together with me? This is the challenge that I'm having. I need direction in this area of my life. Pastor, what do you think I should do? You will get that covering and you will also be helped by the Lord. Through your shepherd. This is why. If you are a person who does not believe in church. You need to. At least be connected. To our online ministry. Do that. Don't get carried away. In you know, what, other people's, uh, what other people think. There are enough and more Christians today. Who don't believe that they need to be connected to a ministry. 
and they lose out on so many things. You ask, guaranteed you ask a Christian like that who doesn't believe in uh, being connected to a ministry, ask them what the rapture is. They will ask you, they will give all nonsensical replies. Like, you know, is it something that you can eat? They might say, is rapture something that you can eat? Well, then you become more vulnerable to the enemy. Number two, the Bible says you may get harassed and oppressed more by the enemy. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 36, our, our, our theme verse itself, Jesus says, the Bible says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Sheep without a shepherd are prone to be harassed and to become helpless. That's why when you're connected to a ministry, you will also get opportunities to serve the, the body of Christ. There will, be, there will be people who will guide you. Now, I have also started doing that now, just because, you know, for example, if I can't uh, uh, preach on a Sunday, you know, un unlike those days, now we don't cancel our Sunday services. I don't uh, put a message saying, you know, this for this Sunday, we can't uh, uh, have the service. No, there are people that, you know, I can very joyfully handle and say, can you preach? Because I will not be able to. Because like that, you need to grow. Your gifts must be, you know, the Lord must use you. Very especially when it comes to you having a gift of preaching and teaching. So all this comes when you are connected to a ministry with a servant of God. Number three, you may feel spiritually helpless due to the lack of spiritual guidance. When you are not part of a ministry, you don't listen because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and by hearing from the word of God. So your faith does not grow. Guaranteed you look at a, a, a Christian who doesn't believe in being connected to a ministry, look at their faith. And the Bible says without faith, you can't please God. They don't grow in their faith. If we don't grow in our faith, something is wrong, something is lacking somewhere. So my precious people of God, I want to encourage you today, be connected to a ministry, be connected, even if, even if it's us for that matter. Don't feel bad to send us a message when you're going through a, a challenging time. Don't feel bad to send me a message. No, don't think about the time, just send. The moment I see that, I will reply back to you. This is what we are there for. It's not a nine to five job that we do. We work over time. And we do that because God has given us the grace to do that. So when you don't have a shepherd in your life, the danger is you become more vulnerable to the enemy. You may get harassed, oppressed by the enemy, and you may feel spiritually helpless due to the lack of spiritual guidance. Now, we are going to go even more deeper by looking at the signs of a good shepherd. Signs of a good shepherd. Number one. A good shepherd will train you to rely on your faith, not on their faith. Always remember that. I can't, with the, with the preaching, with all my preaching and teaching, I can't teach you to rely on my faith. This is where discipleship, this is where proper preaching comes into play because I need to train you for you to rely on your faith, my precious people of God, because the Bible did not say that I can please God through someone else's faith. You can't please God through my faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number six says, you can please God with your faith. That is why we have to be behind the body of Christ, any believer that is connected to us. Be behind them, encourage them, drive them. Tell them and get them to spend more time in the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. Because you need to train yourself to rely on your faith and take steps of faith as you are led by the precious Holy Spirit. Amen. Number two, 
a good shepherd will instill a sense of responsibility in you. A good shepherd will instill a sense of responsibility in you. Now, for example, when a prophecy is given over your life, you need to understand that you play a very important part in making that pro prophecy come into pass according to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 18. Because the Bible says, with the prophecies that has gone before you, you need to fight a good fight. You fight a good fight of faith with the prophecies that went before you. And Paul was giving this instruction to young Timothy. Then you need to also become a good student of his word. So a good shepherd will instill a sense of responsibility in you, telling you, hey, look here, you need to spend time in the word of God and you need to become a student of the word of God. You need to become a student of the Holy Spirit. This is why you hear probably in every Zoom session where I tell you, spend time with the Holy Spirit of God. Because there are things the Holy Spirit can teach you directly, which he may not teach through me. And what he reveals to you may be so much greater. It can become so much powerful. And personalized revelation which you receive from the Holy Spirit will always be so colorful. It will be so beautiful when you receive personalized relation, a revelation from the Holy Spirit. And that doesn't happen when you are always running behind people. And you also need to remember, you know, we are living in a time where, oh my goodness, the things that certain people say from pulpits, they say, unless you depend on the revelation the Lord gives me, you have to follow and do everything exactly what I tell you. you know? That is what we call manipulation. As much as the Holy Spirit can speak to me, the Holy Spirit can speak to you. But the question is, does the body of Christ do this? If I ask you, how many hours do you spend in the presence of God? I don't know what kind of response that I will get from some of you. Like I said before, I know, you know the, the ones who spend time in the presence of God. Once you get used to that, my precious people of God, don't get me wrong. In order for me to preach like this, it didn't happen overnight. I also started with a couple of minutes. There were times where angels had to come and wake me up when I was reading the Bible. Five minutes, you know, into reading the Bible. You know, I'm dozing off, you know, and I'm hearing, you know, uh, angels coming and waking up. Yeah, look at this fellow. You know, he has fallen asleep. You know, keeping my head also on the Bible. So that's how we started. Don't think that, you know, we are preaching like this today. We are reading you know, and we were trained. You know? Now, if you can do this, this is absolutely brilliant. I'm just telling you the way that we were trained when we came into ministry. We were trained to read 21 chapters in the Bible a day. So you, at your start, may not need to read 21 chapters. Because forget 21 chapters, 21 verses into the Bible, you may, you know, be taking a good nap, right? But start with at least a couple of chapters. Even if it's one verse, meditate, receive revelation from the Holy Spirit. But thereafter, expand, expand, because the Spirit has capacity to expand. Remember that. Your spirit person inside of you has capacity to expand, to grow, to become powerful. So in that is not going to happen if you don't give the Holy Spirit of God time. Number three, a good shepherd will help you to have no ungodly earthly attachments. A good shepherd, as the Bible describes, will help you to have no earthly attachments, unwanted attachments. For example, attachments to money. There are Christians who are running behind money. They are attached. You know, they have so much of attachments to earthly, earthly things, material things. Whereas the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind 
on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. My precious people of God, you need to spend time with the Holy Spirit. And if you know that you have any attachments to earthly material things, you need to ask the Holy Spirit of God to help you to overcome that. This is only a, a passing time that we are here. It's a temporary journey. We are heading towards our, our eternal abode. This is not our final destination. This is, we are in a pilgrimage on this earth. Number four. A good shepherd must help you to overcome your life which may be shaped by things and feelings instead of God. As a child of God, you need to understand that you can't have your life shaped by things and feelings. That means you can't do things the way you are led to do emotionally all the time because Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, and that means killing off everything connected with that of death. Then it gives a, life, a, a list of certain things like impurity, lust, sexual promiscuity, doing whatever you feel like when you feel like and grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. That's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. So you need to be pushed, trained, encouraged to be led by the Spirit of God and not to have your life shaped by things and feelings. Hallelujah. So these are the areas that you need to look at when you are connected to a ministry, when you're connected to a man or a woman of God, because there is a time where we have come to a time you need to, I will close with this. Jesus said, the good shepherd will give down, they will lay down his life for the sheep. That means when the wolf comes to scatter the sheep, the shepherd does not run. Today it's happening all around. How many Christians, how many ministries have been scattered because of deceiving doctrines? With these so, so-called you know, self-proclaimed prophets who have come into the picture, they are deceiving. They are scattering the sheep. Sheep are all over. Some, they have no place to go. Some are wandering. Some have forgotten what they uh, learned. The basic principles, basic biblical principles, if you ask them, you, they can't remember now because they are scattered. They don't know where to go. They have no place to rest. This is why it's important because always remember a ministry or a shepherd, according to the word of God, Jesus has given them Authority and Jesus, God has given them the ability to watch over your life spiritually. So my precious people of God, don't get into all these bandwagons of Christians you know, that they think that they don't need to be connected to a ministry. Be connected to a servant of God and don't feel bad. You know, if, if, you know, if at all, all, if you are connected to a servant of God and when you have a question, you know, a biblical question, they write to you. And if, they, if you get a response like, you know, you need to stop troubling me with all these questions, that should put a question mark for you. Okay. You must be helped. You must receive direction. And I have said this to you also. Some of the things that, you know, the messages that I get from some of you about the revelation that God has blessed you, you know, it blesses me all. Also, as I read them, when I spend time reading those messages, it blesses me also because we learn from each other. You learn from what the revelation the Lord gives me. I also learn from the revelation God gives. Like I said, God is through the Holy Spirit. He speaks through me at the same time. He can speak to you and he can speak through you. So my precious people of God, no matter where you are connecting from, no matter what ministry that you may be connected to, my precious people of God, I want to let you know Look at all these things. 
does the pastor help you contribute when it comes to your spiritual growth? Amen. And out of jokes, we are going to start, you know, restart doing something on Wednesdays. You know, it's again a good suggestion by Joy. Now, I don't know how many of you will turn up next uh, Wednesday. We used to have this Q&A time. I used to ask people you know, about the books of the Bible and questions from the Bible. And it's high time that we started doing that again. Because you need to be pushed. You need to be encouraged. You need to learn. You need to spend time in the word of God. Because when a day comes, for example, if you are given an, an opportunity to preach, you must know the word of God. Carry the word of God richly in your heart. That's what the Bible says. Let the word of God richly dwell in your heart. Hallelujah. Praise be to his holy name. So with that, let's go into a time of ministry. You know, we'll start worshiping the Lord again and we'll see what the precious Holy Spirit of God wants to do in this session. And uh, I pray that this message would have blessed you and I pray that you will keep seeking the truth and that you will be connected to the spirit of truth. And above everything, I pray that you will spend time with the Holy Spirit. That is the most important thing. Be connected to a good ministry, you know, be connected to a good pastor and spend time in the presence of God. And don't, please don't be connected to ministries that are after your money. If they are after your money, for every single thing, it's about money, money, money. You know, that's the place you need to get out of. Very especially if they're selling healing. You know, if, if, you, if you walk up to them for healing and if they say, okay, if we will pray for healing, you know, they, they, they lay hands on you, they lay one hand on you and they will put the other hand like this saying, okay, healing is 100 bucks. You, know, you need to get out of that place. Healing is free. You need to remember that. Prophecies are given absolutely free when the Holy Spirit speaks. He doesn't take money. He doesn't demand money. So don't fall into this. You, know, you call these camps. Don't fall for these camps. Be after the Holy Spirit. Jesus, when he sent his 12 disciples into ministry, what did Jesus say? In Matthew chapter 10, you find this. Freely you have received. Freely give. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Praise be to his holy name. Preach the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to worship Jesus again. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you.